Okay. <laughs> so this is the new improved Paul. Yes. Well, we'll see. Uh, well, where are we coming to you from? Uh, this is Facebook, Global International World Headquarters. And uh, looks about the same color wall as uh, as your old offices. Uh, yeah, probably. So, uh, what's going on? I mean, are you knee deep in a transition, or are you just beginning, or what's going on? So, really, the whole team right now is just um, learning basically how Facebook works. So, we're getting down into the code, meeting all of the people, and um, understanding exactly what we've gotten ourselves into. Uh, now, I know that there are certain things that uh, you shouldn't or can't talk about, but um, in general, what I'd like to do is to sort of uh, ask you about things that were underway uh, before the acquisition sure. and just hopefully uh, hear about how they're, uh, they haven't been stopped. Is there anything that you were working on that you have stopped working on? Well, we were actually at um, somewhat of a transitional point. So the way we did product development at TrendFeed was um, kind of in cycles of a couple of months at a time. So we would come up with a list of features and um, you know, decide on what it was we were going to do, and then we'd build it all out and then stop again, have a bunch of discussions about what to do next, and then repeat the cycle. And so this came kind of towards the end of one of those cycles. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a whole lot in progress um, we well, I mean, like the stage of deciding what was next. What um, I what I call uh, stream splicing, for right. example, that you know, the last time we talked, you were looking at about thirty days or so. Right, right. I was hoping that we would have that out. Um, I'm not sure <laughs> when when we'll be able to, because clearly um, things have been delayed because we're mostly sure. looking at understanding what's going on here. Um, and not as much on that, so I, I'm not really sure. But I mean, is there? Uh, there's still the plan to to complete what you uh, had thought you were doing. Yeah, I, I'm. I need to check with everyone uh, to see how far along everything is, because mm -hmm. um, features that are a whole lot more work uh, will have to be delayed for quite a while. Things that are um, practically done, we can get out pretty. Mm -hmm. pretty easily. So uh, where would you put that? Uh, and that's the thing I have to check with uh, uh -huh. the people working on it. But what's, I, your, what's your gut? Is that it's something that's going to take a lot of work? It, it seems that my understanding of what needs to be done is that it should be relatively straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, but I could be wrong. Okay. And and just briefly, since uh, most people don't know what we're talking about, uh, what would that that would I think you called it syndication or uh, subscription? No, just the ability for for one stream to subscribe to another. So right. really, what what it comes down to is uh, it's just a, a feature for groups, basically. So mm -hmm. right now you can have a, a group feed, and um, they can import streams from uh, or feeds from external services. But just due to the way that the system works, there's no way to to subscribe to something that's internal to a friend feed, which mm -hmm. is a kind of peculiar limitation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that might be something that's easy to fix, but uh, but I'm not sure, because I'm not uh, the one working on it. So Okay. Uh, but the person who is working on it is still with, uh, is at Facebook now, but right. still so in the whole company group? has moved over to Facebook, and okay. we're all working together uh, right now. Okay. Uh, speaking of importing, uh, a few times in the past few months, I've noticed this uh, uh, issue. You know, as we enter into the era of PubSub, Hubbub, right. and uh, RSS Cloud, and other types of uh, RSS uh, hamburger helper types of uh, technologies, uh, you know, it seems important, at least to me, uh, that uh, you know when you post something uh, that's being accessed inside FriendFeed via an RSS feed right. that it update quickly. Right now, what you know, what is the? I mean, we, you and I have had several DMs uh, on this subject about things that I posted or that didn't show up, or like a, a YouTube feed and just various kinds of things over the, the months. And it, I couldn't tell, and still can't tell, whether or not this was some sort of uh, limitation on the part of uh, the uh, infrastructure that you are providing or something that was just a 
you know, that you had to slow down because of some sort of internal uh, issues with the right. servers or... So generally everything inside of the friend feed system is instant or within about a second. Mm -hmm. um, so typically if something is coming in slowly, it's because um, there's some issue either with an external service or um, you know, at the interface of the services. So sometimes, uh, you know, servers might get overloaded and start blocking connections from external people, which is us, <laughs> uh, or, mm -hmm. or something like that, or, or just that they aren't um, you know, updating when they think they should. So a lot of these things like you know, PubHub, Subub, or <laughs> I always have trouble with the name. But anyway, it's, it's a very new, uh, a new service, and so um, yeah, I think there's still a few bugs that they're working out right. on, on their end. But is, it, it, is the scenario that basically uh, an endpoint has to add that code in order to speed up the inbound uh, process of their particular blog or their... Uh, well, so really all we need to know is that something has been updated. And there's a couple of different ways. And we've tried to support essentially every everything that's out there. Mm -hmm. So the uh, most basic way is just that we check about once every half hour to see if something is updated. Um, and some services have asked us to check less frequently, so a few things are, are slower than that, the, the sort of spontaneous crawl. Uh, but then additionally, we look for other update information, so we monitor um, the blog ping services, mm -hmm. such as um, like weblogs.com, and then Google Blog Search also has one. So if people are pinging those, I think those update maybe every five minutes. Mm -hmm. And so we'll see that update. We'll see that your blog is in the list and we'll go recrawl it. But obviously five minutes is still a little bit slower than we would like. Mm -hmm. um, and so we also have, uh, you can actually ping us directly um, to just say, hey, this page is updated. Recrawl it with uh, the URL of the feed. And this is and a then, SUP, right? Um, no, that's actually, you can just directly ping our server to tell uh -huh. us that you know, with the URL of, of, of the um, feed that has updated. But and that would require each endpoint to specifically ping you. Right, which is why that's not a great solution, but we just put it out there for people sure. who wanted that. Um, and then additionally, of course, we created this uh, SUP protocol, which enables people to just um, expose to the whole world update information. Mm -hmm. And they can either do that by creating their own uh, SUP feed or by just, um, we have a, a public feed that anyone can contribute to and they can just link to that and, and that's actually the same mechanism as just telling us directly mm -hmm. and so then to add uh, SUP support all they have to do is put a tag on their feed and then ping us every time um, they update and then additionally the most recent one is we also added support for the pub hub sub um, something like that or pub pub sub pub um, and that works actually in a mechanism that's somewhat similar to to SUP, but it has a, a, a more complex intermediary. Um, so what you do is you ping the intermediary and then the intermediary pings us. So you're, as an endpoint, you have to ping the intermediary. Uh, so you have to add that code. In, in, for pub, pub, if you're, pub, yeah. Um, yes, you, you would have to, again, add support for that. But fortunately, um, well, that's mainly Google properties, but uh, feed, I think FeedBurner now has support in Blogger mm -hmm. and um, Google Reader, mm -hmm. so so they're adding that support into a lot of the Google right, services. and they had something that they just rolled out today with uh, Google Alerts support. Oh, I didn't see that. That's yeah. good. Yeah, so we're starting to get this, you know, sort of uh, outside of FriendFeed. We're starting to get this uh, infrastructure right. that is somewhat similar to what we were talking about earlier, namely this kind of process of subscribing to a subscription, uh, right. and in effect orchestrating, uh, you know, uh, an aware container right. that can then turn around and and announce itself to you mm -hmm. in various ways. Right. So, uh, and then there was the, uh, there's been some speculation that uh, uh, I think Dave Weiner suggested uh, in one of his uh, tweets uh, within the last week or two uh, that... Um, that perhaps the uh, uh, speed with which uh, Twitter was uh, allowing updates to be seen by FriendFeed would decline or stop as a result of the acquisition. Mm -hmm. uh, have you heard anything to that effect? Uh, I don't 
don't believe so. Um, yeah, I, I yeah. mean, it seems to be working fine. Yeah. And there was a period of time where uh, they were transitioning from not supporting XMPP to uh, uh, something that they've been doing uh, on a sort Right, of so they've built uh, some HTTP protocols that work a lot better than mm -hmm. the old XMPP one. And so uh, we switched over to that several months back, and so that's been working really well. And actually, um, we are working with them. They, they want us to switch to a different uh, HTTP interface that they built called bird dog um, <laughs> and so but it should be the exact same functionality so things should be just as fast so you will be continuing uh, at least until you resolve some of the architectural issues of the transition you'll be continuing to work uh, for now in the friend feed architecture to continue to upgrade it and uh, you know, we're, we're necessary, but I mean, to be clear, our, our focus is more on a lot of the issues that Facebook is facing right now. Mm -hmm. So we're putting, I mean, what we're doing right now is just learning mainly how everything at Facebook mm -hmm. works. So, uh, yeah, inevitably there's less engineering being put into um, friend feed, but certainly any um, maintenance that needs to be done, mm -hmm. you know, fixing, like I need to update this uh, Twitter feed so that we use the new feed there um, and some other you know, some other straightforward features and right. things like that will, will be done. So, you know, looking at the, uh, at, you know, if you're, if you're coming at this as a friend feed user, which of course right. I am, uh, and also uh, the project that I'm working on as a friend feed developer as well, or right. a third party developer, uh, you know, this could be perceived, and, and certainly some people have suggested that it should be perceived as a as a whole scale you know halt in the development of the product. Um, but it doesn't sound like that's what you're really suggesting here. It's more like, uh, and I don't want to put the words in your mouth, but at the same time, I I wonder how much you can say about this. So I'll put the words in your mouth, and okay. you can. Respond. Uh, it seems like there's a uh, uh, the. I mean, Facebook obviously bought, uh, you know, uh, acquired you because they felt that what you're doing is important. Right. And therefore, uh, maybe the way to approach this is to ask you, how, where do you see us in this moment? I mean, you know, I I, I think it's fair to say that. Uh, your anticipation of what would happen when you s turned on those real-time services, uh, it would be fair to say perhaps that it accelerated things more than you had expected at the time? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not, it's, I'm it's, had, it's had a pretty big impact mm -hmm. on your understanding of what the product is and and what you know what's going on in this micro-messaging uh, aggregation space right so uh, so you mean with our with the redesign that we did back in um, yeah the just spring the, where we made everything real time yeah right absolutely i mean it, it certainly has been i think something that our understanding has evolved as we've worked on friend feed that um, a lot of the value is in that ability to have that just very real-time communication and um you know we're actually using it probably more than ever now because uh, as we're as we're all learning and how, how, all the Facebook thing and everything, mm -hmm. we're all still communicating with each other over over friend feed, um, and it's a really great it's a really great tool to have that real time communication and 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 um, and that be able to you know, be able to have their group group uh, coordination. Eating your own dog food and at the same time, uh, you know the sort of Pirandellian you know aspect of you know using something which then informs how you use it and therefore right, how you right. develop it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean that's. It's uh, for me at least that that's really the only way to do product development is that you build things and you use them and you learn from your experiences using it and then that feeds back into the next step where you where you refine the product mm -hmm. uh, and then you you use it again and you learn from that experience and I think that's where a lot of the best products come from is is it's something that people are really using themselves. So do you you, you don't sense a, a sort of a do you have any concept of how long it's going to take for you to sort of catch up with yourself uh, in this new context? You know, I think it's too early to, to know because we're still just ourselves getting familiar with the, all the systems here, how everything here works, and then 
you know, working obviously with the team here on um, for figuring out what the logical next steps are. Mm -hmm. And so you know, that's something that really no one knows. But mm -hmm. um, but absolutely, you know, we, we bring along all of the experience that we've gained um, from working on FriendFeed and, and obviously we're still using it and continuing to, to get value out of it. So. Uh, you said, uh, I think you and Mike uh, Arrington had a conversation uh, uh, a couple days ago, and I've, I've read this elsewhere, maybe Scoble uh, talking with you uh, privately. The um, uh, This came together rather quickly. Right. Uh, do you think that this came together rather quickly as much on Facebook's part as it did on yours? Uh, well, you know, they've been interested in, in FriendFeed for, for a long time, um, and they've always, <laughs> really literally from the time we formed the company, whenever we would see people from, from uh, Facebook, they would say, hey, you know, are you guys interested in, in joining up? And um, we were never very interested, honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, but really what's, what's happened is um, just that we spent a lot more time talking to a number of the people here and um, seeing where they're headed with things, seeing what, what their thoughts and, and hopes for their product is, um, and also just kind of reflecting on the future of of where we think this whole space is headed, uh, and just decided that it was actually like a really great um, point in history to, well, something happened. <laughs> uh, a, a great time in, in history, really, to, to join the company here and, and uh, make a big contribution here. Well, that it seems to imply, though, that, um, that the things that you've discovered, particularly in, in, since your redesign and the, right. and the, the advent of real-time communications, that uh, uh, that there was good reason to believe on your part, as well as theirs, that you wouldn't be just uh, absorbed into a culture that wasn't going the way you wanted it to go. Right. I mean, it would seem, you know, based on all of your messaging in the past about not wanting to be acquired, sure. that that you know that so something clicked, uh, and it wasn't just on your part; it was also on their part. Right. Yeah. I mean, that is, I, and I can't really speak to what their thinking has been through the whole process sure. because obviously I, I don't know, but, um, I think, you know, part of it is, you know, people say like, well, has Facebook copied your features or whatever, but, um, and, and clearly there has been, you know, they have been using FriendFeed and have been looking at it mm -hmm. and they like what we've done and they've incorporated some of it. And to me that actually is like a really positive signal because it means that they are very interested in new ideas. They are interested in evolving the mm -hmm. product and improving it. And really do have a lot of those same goals in mind, um, and so I guess my estimation of where they would be a couple of years ago is different from the way it has actually turned out. Because you know, in my, Facebook, in my mind, a couple of years ago was just this kind of site where you have profiles and games or something, and that wasn't um, that wasn't I guess what appealed to me as much as some of the things that are more like friend feed. And so as we've seen that, that they have those same interests and aspirations, um, you know, the combination has made a lot more sense and been a lot more appealing. So since we can't really talk too much about uh, what you've talked about, you know, internally with Facebook yet, I mean, I'm hopeful that you'll start to talk about it more yeah. as we go along. Uh, but you know, let's talk about what your take is of what Twitter's doing right now. Okay. Um, there was an announcement a couple of days ago about uh, a retweet uh, right, function, right. which appears to be a sort of a quasi taking that uh, out of the body of the text and putting it into metadata. Right. Is that your understanding of what's going on? Uh, yeah, I haven't had a chance to look at their new APIs, but that I think that's about right. And they've done that before. Um, the the app replies are actually. Um, you know, it's it's in the text of the message, but it's also there's actually also metadata associated with it. So, if you look at the at least the JSON feeds for um, for uh, for Twitter, the at replies will typically, if they were done through a web interface or through a compliant client uh, such as FriendFeed, th they actually include a reference to which message it was a reply to. Mm -hmm. So, using that metadata, you can actually tie together um, the at replies with the message that they're replying to. Are you using that metadata? Not currently. Um, do you have plans to? You know, mean, do you think it's, it would seem that it would be a service that would be exceptionally valuable to uh, Twitter uh, and therefore 
I mean, people like me who, who haven't been on Twitter except just yeah. to make sure that uh, that I'm getting everything that I want in French feed. Right. Uh, it seems like uh, that's sort of the doorway to a, a form of threaded conversations. In fact, it's more advanced than what you're doing right now. Um, it, it's different. I mean, it, it's uh, the conversations evolve a little bit differently when it when it, they come in a single message at a time versus being a, a mm -hmm. whole. Uh, you know, the, the friend feed thread is a um, it's more linear, and so it tends to be more self aware because people see all of the other comments. Whereas if you know ten different people at reply to a tweet, they aren't mm -hmm. all aware of each other's at replies. Yeah, um, so just socially, the structure is a little bit different. Um, but yeah, I mean, and this is completely speculation, but I would imagine that a lot of the Twitter clients will begin to use that data to to produce a more thread. So you're not thinking of yourself as a Twitter client anymore. Um, I mean, we have some of the functionality, but we certainly aren't, um, you know, if you put friend feed next to a uh, tweet deck or something, it's a very different product. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, you, we've talked in the past about the, uh, the idea of being able to actually respond to, uh, uh an individual comment. Uh, it seems to be on the border of what we're talking about yeah, and that's you mean that we're having like nested comments. Well, we talked about it in a or, number of different ways. One would be to be able to like a comment, right? Uh, which I think is probably more profoundly uh, interesting than. I mean, there was yeah, uh, yeah. I, I would like the ability to like a comment. We were never able to um, come up with a UI that that we all liked, unfortunately. Um, but I, I think that maybe. Um, I think maybe that, and this is, again, just speculation on my part, I think that's something that we'll see maybe evolve at the community level um, hmm. in the future. But uh, the comment nesting is, is something that people often request, but it's a, um, it has benefits, but it also has costs, mm -hmm. and it's, and it, because it, it changes the dynamics of the conversation. Uh, and it changes your ability to, uh, say, just see what are the new comments because all of a sudden they get scattered throughout. Right. Uh, well, it's one of the limitations and uh, apparent advantages, to your point, of uh, Wave. Right. Uh, you know, where you can just jump in at any point, which is fine, except that it orphans. Uh, you know, so, so sometimes you get right. people taking over the middle of a conversation, which yeah, is kind exactly. Of bizarre. The, the problem that it, it comes up, and, and the reason I thought about this so much is because I also um, wrote a lot of the original Google Groups um, product, which was Usenet, um, and it, we did several different variations on, on this threading thing there. And then again with Gmail, we revisited it, uh, exactly how things should be threaded, and. The conclusion is that for a lot of these really big conversations, you kind of need the the tree structure to to enable it to go off and and and, um, and branch and everything else. But it has a real cost associated with it because it slows down your consumption of it because you have to start following the whole structure. And you know, if you look at like you, a document, uh, let's say a, a great big thread, and there's two or three new new comments, you know, they can be scattered throughout the entire thing. You can't just look at the bottom and see what's new. And so um, the linear style, which is used in both Gmail and FriendFeed, is much more efficient um, for just seeing what's new. And the pro where it breaks down is where things get really giant. Um, but our design point for FriendFeed was always somewhat smaller conversations, not having you know a million people all commenting on the same thing the way you might find on uh, Reddit or something like that. Yeah, although uh, when we... Uh, toward the end of uh, the experience with uh, the Gilmore Gang, uh, when we were working with uh, Leo Laporte, sure. uh, you know we get these thousand comments. Sure, uh, but even swarms. then, it's, it's much easier because it's happening in real time. It's much easier to follow it where they're all just popping in at the bottom, and you can just read them. Whereas if you imagine, let's say, a, in a more tree structure, you would have pages and pages of comments, and they'd be and the new ones would be popping in all over the place. Sure. Right? It makes it much harder to follow in real time. Or what's to happening. come back uh, and catch up uh, uh, 20 minutes later exactly. because you have to basically go to the top and, go, and work your way through right. uh, the new additions, which uh, 
you know. Right. So I, I take so, your point so about the linear, UI. It, it's much easier for you know, keeping that time ordering has a lot of benefits. Uh, you mentioned that the, you thought that this might move to uh, the community, perhaps in terms of likes. Right. Uh, what you're really talking about here is the API, right? Uh, the API, and also you know, a lot of people have have gotten interested in this concept of creating, um, you know, little friend view clones or whatever. And I think yeah. that's. Uh, I mean, what what are your thoughts on that? I, I think that's that's. Perfectly, I think that's a great thing. I mean, I, I've I've said this many times before that I think in the long term, what we should have with all of the with these services is the more federated model of something like FriendFeed. I mean, sorry, Gmail, email, <laughs> something something like email where you have multiple services and they and they're able to interoperate. And um, you know, I, I think that it, it's unfortunate that we you know maybe didn't communicate. Uh, with our users quite as well as we, we should have as part of this deal where we sold the company to Facebook. But uh, maybe one uh, silver lining to that is it's got people very interested in, in building these kinds of services. And I think in the long term that will be good for people just because you have so many different people thinking about the problem and different approaches to it. And you know that's typically where you see the most innovation. But doesn't it sort of uh you know, hold Facebook's uh, feet to the fire a little bit about keeping the uh, API open and and continuing along the path that you've uh, already built out. Uh, in what sense? Well, uh, how do you clone something if you don't have access to uh, the structure and understand well, the, the what it API is? that we've built for FriendFeed, uh, in particular the new revision that we just launched um, last month, I think, is is actually very simple. Like we put a lot of work into trying to reduce the number of of um, concepts in the API and the number of API calls. So there's really only a couple of abstractions. There's entries and messages and people, and and there's it's actually not too hard to reconstruct that. And then you get, um, you know, you could potentially recreate that functionality pretty pretty easily. So do you think I, I'm skirting the issue here because yeah. uh, you know. I'm not sure what you uh, want to or can talk about, but uh, do you think that it's a safe bet that uh, Facebook is going to be open to taking, uh, you know, some or a lot of or even potentially all of your API and working it into their API? Um, I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, um, but I, I think that they're very interested also in the platform. Mm -hmm. and, and really being able to deliver a lot of utility to people through the Facebook platform and taking um, taking this beyond just being you know, a website, but actually something that, that is, has a lot of utility across the web. And how, and does, if, how does that service serve them, Facebook? Uh, I mean, it, it just increases the utility of the product. Um, you know, Facebook is obviously something that a lot of people like, but if you're able to take that and make it useful across the entire web, um, you know, that becomes an enabling technology for a lot of things, which has, um, which is to me one of the most interesting aspects of, of this company is is that it has that potential to really, I think, enable a lot of new businesses and products that people may not even be thinking about today. Um, what's your take on the everyone status? Uh, it, <laughs> it seems fine to me. I mean, I I, I think. That, Do you think that, it's a platform that you can build out what you're doing uh, at FriendFeed on? Um, possibly. I, I actually haven't given it as much thought as I probably should give it. Um, but I, I think that it's part of um, you know, their, their ongoing effort to open up, but in a way that is still comfortable to people so mm -hmm. that people are feel secure. Because, I mean, I think that's what's driven a lot of Facebook's growth is that it's a place where people can sign up and they can be comfortable mm -hmm. sharing their photos or whatever. Um, but at the same time, you know, for those people who want to be a little bit more open, they're starting to provide those options too. Right. But, you know, how much of what FriendFeed did uh, or does uh, is in the nature of those kind of private communications? Um, I'm not sure. I, <laughs> I well, understand. I mean, there's direct messages. You know, sure. you could send a, sure. I believe you can send a three, up to three uh, MP3 files. Right. Just to guard against uh, file yeah, sharing, don't want to be a file sharing so. right? Um, but pictures you can send privately, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so I mean, there is an analogy to some of the 
inward facing or the silo facing uh, friend uh, Facebook features right. in FriendFeed. Do you right. think there are a lot of them, or is it really a different um, I mean, we kind had, of concept? FriendFeed has, a, I think, a somewhat simpler privacy model. It was just a really just like a one bit kind of thing. Like either your public a feed is either public or private, and that's in the, and that's very simple, and that was really the only thing we supported. So um, direct messages are sort of by definition private unless you include them on a public feed. Um, and likewise, groups are just another feed. My home feed, it, all these things are just are just feeds inside a friend feed, and each feed is either public or private. And um, that worked really nice, I think, from a simplicity standpoint. Uh, there's also, I think, some benefits to, uh, obviously, they have a more complex model here with, like, networks, and you know, that way I could... I can, for example, make some of the information that I post visible only to people inside of, let's say, the Facebook network, which, mm -hmm. is, which is useful. Uh, but going back to what you were talking about, about you know eating your own dog food right. and the in the transition, mm -hmm. uh, you know, essentially you've got work, you know, collaboration software that you're uh, that you're leveraging here. Right. Uh, do you see that as? Uh, being more useful to you internally than it's going to be baked into you know the larger product. I mean, you know, you you come from a Gmail background, right? Right. Uh, what's the last time I looked, uh, Facebook's email system is uh, difficult you to mean use. Their, their inbox. Uh, yeah, the inbox is just a nightmare, out. basically. I forget what they call it. Some kind of messages or something. Yeah. Right, well. Right. To the point, you forget what they call it. That would be <laughs> right, a yeah, clue. It's, it's, uh, it's not my favorite feature. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. So, I mean, do you do you do you think that you're going to have uh, some impact in that area as well, or do you see it as being more of a integrated approach to? I mean, you know, a lot of us have started with uh, direct messages on Twitter and right. then migrated to that functionality when you supported it, right. and we for a lot of specific kinds of email, particularly the kind of communications of a work group, mm -hmm. like, you know, when we're getting a, a, a gang show together, we'll right. communicate over that mechanism. Right. It starts to replace email. Right. Yeah, I, 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 um, I mean, we use actually the direct messages and groups and everything a lot internally for the same reason. And I think the reason in particular, I, at least I like it better than email a lot of times. It's just a much more lightweight thing. You know, there's no, you have to fill out a subject or, you know, email has uh, a long history. It's been around um, for, I don't know, 35 or 40 years or something like that. And so people bring just a lot of expectations along that end up slowing it down. You know, you've got all these signatures and people say hi. And, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of, there's just a lot of, uh, a lot of overhead to, in practice to send in an email. And so, you know, just direct messaging someone on friend feed ends up being a lot more efficient. Um, in terms of the actual products inside of Facebook, I think it's not going to be a literal like drop in where we take a feature from friend feed and just try to stuff it into Facebook because you know I would I think inevitably hope not. you end up with a, a rather it it doesn't really work you know right if you if you do it that way. Um, but it's like we, designing a giraffe by committee, basically. Yeah. So, so what what we do bring though is is obviously just that we've been thinking about these problems and working on them for a long time, and so um, we can bring a lot of experience to the discussions here in the in the um, planning process. Sure. I, I, I'm just talking more about the. I mean, to me, this this event of right. your acquisition uh, is a, a signal. Uh, of the profound nature of the disruption of real time, right? And the, not that it replaces RSS or any of those kinds of uh, uh, you know uh, discussions, but more that it is disruptive to the extent that we really don't know what's going to happen next uh, as a result of it, because right. it, it was surprising to I think all of us. Uh, when Twitter sort of emerged out of nowhere, right. uh, you know, and, w and jumped from being uh, this toy to being this really powerful toy right. to God knows what it is. And, and what you've done, it seems to me, is, uh, is to harness some of the fundamentals of what Twitter's about and then add the capability of sort of resolving or synchronizing the rest of the social space. 
-hmm. or the important parts of the social space into something that is you know essentially you know the center of the new uh, I hesitate to call it desktop because Mark Benioff will criticize me and say that it's the net the center of the new network or the net top or whatever right. but I mean that's a pretty powerful concept and don't you think that that's kind of what Facebook is grappling with is that you know oh my god what's what have we and others done here and how do we make it better right I, I mean I think you actually said it best when you said none of us knows where this is going and that to me is a lot of what makes it exciting you know if once once it's clear where everything is headed then that means you've kind of answered all of the important questions and um, the surprise and adventure is, is gone and so that's a lot of what makes this job attractive is that we don't know exactly where it's going and our job is to figure out where it's going and, and learn from what we've done in the past and what's going on right now and our experiences and somehow put it all together into these new products. But you know there's a, you know people are afraid of change on some fundamental level as much as they're excited right, by right. it they're also intimidated by it and you know there's been a lot of anger and fear about what you're doing and what you've done and then there's this whole URL shortener debate. Right. I mean, you guys have a URL shortener. That's right. Uh, how did you escape uh, being vilified by uh, various constituencies, or have you? Uh, you know, I'm sure someone has vilified us, but I... I'm not trying I, to... I, I mean, there's the, the URL shortener thing is kind of a, an interesting um, debate, because if you have so many of these URL shorteners, inevitably some of them are going to disappear or lose their data. Um, I think we're not really in that in that bucket. I mean, it's not very much data. Um, we can keep that alive, or distribute the data, whatever, um, very easily. And so, well, I, I, I mean, on some any... level, it's you know the the fear that friend feed is going to disappear and get swallowed up is right. a fear of losing you know the data, all that data. Sure, but and in many ways, though, I think if people have that concern. Um, it's also worth considering that I think if anything in the Facebook deal may have lowered the chances of that kind of thing happening because you know, Facebook is a very established company there if, not as much as a Google if they support if they support that particular construct or some sure. analogy to it but but I, as I said I, I think it's it's so little data it's so easy to support that I just don't see the logic just stub in, it in, out as a this is a legacy uh, uh, field, right? There's there's just no reason why that would ever disappear. You know, it's but so what, easy but, to support uh, FF.IM or something like that. Why but it would, would you... be it would be more interesting to wonder whether or not there's going to be a FB.IM. Oh, um, I, I if there is, I'm not aware of any plans. Well, you, I've been here what three hours? Is I've that... been here for this is my third day, <laughs> so so right. I, maybe they didn't tell me yet, but I the, the URL shortener, the whole URL shortener. Um, it, it's a very peculiar product because it's it's something that only exists or is only popular because of a, a limitation of Twitter. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't agree with that. Uh, that I mean, that's the because that's. Of that? Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's true. Well, I mean, at this point, I, now that they've become popular, people have started adding click tracking and analytics, and that stuff is actually Oh, really my cool. goodness, yeah. I mean, like, right. what, your best of day. I mean, what's that? Right. You know, you're doing the same thing. You've been uh, doing it's, this. It's not based off of clicks in the case of best of day, though. Okay, um, well. But it, it could be. I mean, we probably, it should be, but it's not. Um, no, I, I agree. It's actually evolved into something that's interesting. But the whole reason it started... No, but it the whole popular. reason Twitter started and became popular <laughs> is completely bogus. Yeah, it's 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 fascinating. Um, All right, but yeah. you know, enough already of like, oh my God, this isn't what we thought this was. Sure, I mean, sure. It's not what we thought this was. It's something that now yeah, we think yeah, yeah. it's something, and we may change our minds again. But I mean, this is serious business. Sure. But you know, a lot of the click tracking abilities could also be had in other ways without having to. Um, obfuscate the URLs as much as they have, right? Um, well, you're unobfuscating them. Right, so. for example, uh, and we've, we've turned it around so that you can at least see what the URL is. Mm -hmm. And my guess is that a lot of other people will start doing that as well. And I mean, so, it's like when, you know, when Windows put compression into the operating system. Yeah. I mean, you know, no more, we don't, no we, more, uh, there's no 
there are no uh, focus groups of you know of refugees from the uh, you know commercial uh, compression companies. I mean, you know, people got over that. Sure. Why wouldn't they get over this? Uh, sure, <laughs> I agree. I I think yeah, as long, I think people are worried about the, the the functionality and the capabilities that they love disappearing, and and I agree with you. I I'm not concerned about that. The exact form that these things will take in the future is very uncertain, but I'm confident that the, the capabilities and the things that people like will be around in some form. So what is, what's your take on whether there'll be a, you know, I posited with, uh, you know, the RSS rest in peace uh, tsunami. Uh, I posited the idea that essentially we're going to see a, a, a Google Reader-like interface for the Twitter sphere for the micro messaging space uh, is that what FriendFeed is, or uh, is, or could be, or? Um, I mean, I think if it if these things evolve in that direction, what you'll have is probably the same kind of thing you have with Twitter clients, where you have a, an explosion of different interfaces, and that's and that's a really great thing because that's when you see a lot of innovation. That's because everyone is trying all these different ideas, and it's a very competitive space. Do you think that uh, Google Reader is going to be successful at reverse engineering a social environment? Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I'll take that as a no. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't... Um, it seems unlikely to me, but I, I could be wrong. I, I hope that they are successful. Uh -huh. So that you know, there, there was some sort of standard that would emerge uh, that they were participating in? Essentially, right? Right, right. You're right. I mean, I think that is what will, in the long term, what we'll have is more standards here so that it isn't like product X wins and everyone else loses. That's bad for everyone in the long term because then you don't have competition. Without competition, you don't really have innovation. What about the, uh, the you know, I get these messages once every couple of days. I'll get a comment uh, in email from somebody who's read my friend feed post pushed to Twitter and then pushed from Twitter to Facebook. Right. Uh, and then they're responding to that. So, you know, I have to go, literally go and click on the email to go find out what I said that they're responding <laughs> to. Right, right. And in the case of the most recent one, it was a complaint because of the FF.IM <laughs> thing, which is like, you know, how come you don't have any context? And, you know, I could go and argue with them that uh, there's more context there than there is in an at reply. Right, right. You know, it's actually pointing at the conversation. Right. So you can just click on it and find out. Right. Uh, but the problem is, is that if you respond on Facebook, that's like sending a, you know, putting a letter in a bottle and sending it and throwing it in the ocean. <laughs> uh, well, I, I think, uh, I mean, it, in terms of responding to that person in particular, I, I think they will then get an email. Um, yeah, but, you know. Those of us who Responding like to, the to whole world type is, once and right, read right. many are not real interested in, yeah, in, no, in the I, I dead end of it's, Facebook. It's, um, the way it is right now, I, I get the same thing. I, I have, um, yeah, you get the ad replies on Twitter, you get comments on friend feed, comments on Facebook. Um, occasionally someone will like, email me <laughs> um, after they read something. I, I like the fact that it comes in email. At least I get notified of it. Right, right. I well, appreciate I mean, that. At this point, I think... You know, more and more people are at least sending email notifications. So Facebook, by default, sends email notifications. FriendFeed sends email notifications. Um, and I guess I don't really see the at replies, except I just I have a search set up to pull them into FriendFeed, so I see them there. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a kind of weird experience, and it's something that we have to fix. So you don't you fixed it in FriendFeed how? Well, we did, with the conversation. Basically. Sure, I mean, we we fixed it within FriendFeed, but uh, obviously. It doesn't exactly fix the overall problem because you know, not everyone's using FriendFeed. Some people are using these other products as well. Yeah, but so what? I, I'm just saying <laughs> now that you're at Facebook, right? Uh, you know, Twitter has solved that problem by just basically publishing everything. Um, by making everything public, you mean? Yeah. Right, and it's actually only sort of true, right? Because the the Twitter, you may get an at reply from someone who is. Private. Well, I mean, they they broke it uh, yet again with their new rule of you know sort of making the default some form of uh, of at reply 
uh, visibility, which isn't for everybody. And right. I mean, you know, that's why I didn't like at replies to begin with. Is that you couldn't control it. Right. You couldn't say I want this to go to everybody, and if they don't like it, they can unfollow, and right. and and that's fine. Yeah, I think the the community has maybe developed a convention of there as as a sort of a pattern there, or maybe just what do they do? Like prefix it with a dot or some character to prevent yeah. that to make it a, a yeah. Public uh, one. Whether that works or not, I don't know. Yeah. But but my point would be that uh, you know there's something about maybe it's the legacy of the more personal space of Facebook mm -hmm. that there's this orphan comment structure which just seems to be about you know as far away from what FriendFeed does and sort of even more broken than what Twitter does right so it, it, it seems like something that you know that you might want to have some sort of impact on right yeah at, no, your I, new company. I, I agree with you I mean I again like I'm still learning exactly what the plans are and obviously working on working with people on, on developing plans going forward um, mm -hmm. so I don't know specifically but I would expect um, that that will be addressed because certainly as um, things as they enable the like everyone visibility exactly you're going to want that same thing to apply to all the comments on it and um, actually I don't know if it already works that way or not uh, it may be well, but it I, does, I think the, the everyone capability right now is still just being refined but I, I, I think it will make sense that if <laughs> if one part of it is visible I think people are going to expect the comments to, to have that same um, that same visibility so you know you've got a and I know we need to wind up here uh, you've got a um, a very dedicated and also fairly uh, you know leading edge kind of uh, user base right. in friend feed wouldn't it make sense to sort of roll out uh you know transitional features that of the type that we were just talking about as sort of friend feed add-ons in other words you know prepare the ground right. by... as a, an experimental platform yeah yeah exactly yeah that's a very interesting idea um then we've talked about that. I, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's if that's how it will play out exactly, mm -hmm. but I think it's it's definitely worth considering. It would certainly take some of the heat off of you know Scoble, uh, you know, just basically flailing around trying to uh, to uh, you know complain uh -huh. uh, about these features, rather than that to have some sort of transitional uh, uh, strategy for piping. It's basically something like uh, what Yahoo did with pipes being able to pipe these messages in such a way that like uh, you did with uh, at replies or with mm -hmm. I still don't understand why you send two versions uh, of uh, a message one oh, with an uh, at reply I don't understand I what the logic <laughs> I think it's a, yeah but uh, you know, it's, I asked you this a, six months yeah, ago yeah I'm sorry I forgot um, it's it's a uh, it's something I should fix. If the you reason, click that, the technical reason is very disappointing. It's it's basically that they're implemented in in two different parts of the code. Right, but I don't. <laughs> not I, aware of each other. I don't. I I don't care about yeah. that. What I'm saying is, wouldn't it make sense to if you click that button that it only sent the at reply version? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so yes. we understand what it should yes. do. Yes. Yeah, I mean, the, the it starts to get a little bit sticky once you dig in. Like, should you always include the ff.im link, or do you then want to make that be optional? And so once you start actually really working on the problem, you start wanting to make a lot of bigger changes in terms of, yeah. of, of you know, maybe I want to actually send a somewhat different version. Like, if let's say I leave a 300-character comment on FriendTweet, which is perfectly fine, but it's going to get clipped on Twitter. Maybe you want to... Know, leave out the vowels or something to make it to make it fit inside of the 140 characters. Um, yeah, I think you're overthinking. It. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, these are the feature requests that. that no, to get, me, it's so. like a it's so a, you, it's a want... Google Reader problem, which is at some point you look up and it's 28,000 unread items, and you say, "Okay, goodbye." Yeah, yeah. you know, it, I never use the I never click the at reply because I don't understand what you're trying to do. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, the at reply preceded the other feature by a lot, and so I, I think. Part of the reason it ha also just hasn't been very urgent is they typically get used by different people. The people who send all of the comments to Twitter, it's a relatively you know, small group of people, and they're just happy having everything going over. And the people who use the at reply are, tend to be 
again, it's like a, a relatively small group and they're very selective about when they do it. And so the overlap between those two groups right. is very small. The reason that I'm mentioning it in the context of what we're talking about is, is that uh, to me it would make sense that if I wanted to do that, just have it be a stat, you know, a, a preferences setting and let me just turn it on so um, that I don't have to present, you know, and, and then you know, alternatively turn it off if I didn't want to do that. Right, right. You know, that it would make more sense. And so I guess what we're talking about here are these kind of routing strategies, which uh, the issue with the Facebook uh, orphaned comments is sort of a version of that. That's right. What, that's why I'm saying. Um, you know what? I actually have a meeting um, right now, which is probably why I'm getting a call. Okay. Is it okay if we finish up? Yeah. Okay. All right. So when are you going to be able to talk about, uh, uh, you know, timing? Uh, you know, I think that'll be an evolving thing because two weeks, a month. Uh, I'll have more to say in a month, oh, but between I, a I probably, week and I a probably, year, I'll probably never be able to answer all of your questions. But I'll, no, but I'm, as time goes on, I'll have more answers. I've, I've tried yeah. to be more careful yeah. about uh, you know pushing uh, you know the buttons that obviously you've been felt constrained about, and I appreciate you doing this without uh, Facebook, uh, you know, PR sure, sure. all over me. <laughs> They're good. Actually, I like the PR piece. Yeah, me too. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, congratulations and good luck. Right. And Thank thanks you. so much for being uh, so uh, open about what you're doing. Sure.